Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, the objectives will be to be able to recognize the most common isotope if I only give you the average atomic mass on the periodic table. That's the focus of the first part of the lesson. We're going to end the, the lesson with learning how to calculate the average atomic mass on the periodic table. So the first part is going to be able to recognize the most common isotope given an average atomic mass, and the second part is going to be learning how to calculate the actual average atomic mass on the periodic table. And I also call this isotopes part two, so if you're just tuning in for the first time, there was an isotope lesson prior to this. Okay, just a little review here. What are isotopes? We said on the last video, in the last lesson, that isotopes have the same number of protons, same number of protons, I'm putting a lot of emphasis there, but they differ in the number of neutrons. So we have a different number of neutrons, and if I have a different number of neutrons, that's also going to give me something different, which is a different mass number. That's the combination of protons and neutrons. And basically, what am I really saying? I have two or more different forms of the same exact element. Okay, so here's what we're talking about today. That right there is the average atomic mass. If you took out your periodic table, it actually would be a, probably a pretty good idea for you to take your periodic table out right now if you happen to have one. Take it out, you know, press pause, take the time to take it out because I do want you to look at it and refer to it during the lesson. But we're going to be talking about this number down here on the bottom, 12.01. All right, this number right here is the atomic weight. Or really, if I'm going to make a little, a little adjustment to this, it's the average atomic weight. Another way to say this is actually it's the average mass number. All right, so here we go. That's what we'll be examining today. 12.01 is the average mass number or the average atomic weight. And just to give you guys a little bit of refresher here, this is my atomic number. All right, so just a little refresher for you guys. The average atomic weight or the average atomic mass number is, is known as a weighted average. Okay, it's a weighted average. It's a weighted average of all of the isotopes of the element. So 12.01 is an average mass. It's not the mass of carbon. It is an average mass of all of carbon's different forms. Carbon comes in three different forms. Carbon comes as carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. So this one box in the periodic table represents carbon-12, carbon-13, and also carbon-14. So 12.01 is the average of them. It's not just the average. Specifically, it is considered a weighted average. And that's something we'll be discussing in the second half of the lesson. So the second half of the lesson, you are going to be calculating out the 12.01. All right, guys, let's cruise. Here we go. So if you have your periodic tables out, please, you know, take it out if you don't have so already, and find hydrogen in the upper left-hand corner. What I want you to look at is the average mass. I'm going to circle it right here. The average mass number of hydrogen is 1.00794. All right. Now, from this, you know, what, what I want you to do is to determine which hydrogen isotope occurs most in nature. All right. So that's what I'm looking at, which one occurs most in nature. I want to tell you this. There are three forms of hydrogen in nature. Hydrogen with a mass number of 1, hydrogen with a mass number of 2, and hydrogen with a mass number of 3. I could have also written this as a 1 over 1 H. I could have written this as a 2 over 1 H, and this as a 3 over 1 H. For those of you who like to see it expressed in that format. So here's what I'm going to tell you. All right, This is the answer. This number right here is going to have the mass closest to which of these? this. It's going to match that mass number. So I'm going to let you know, I'm making a prediction that hydrogen occurs in three forms. The one that occurs most often in nature is going to be given the most emphasis in the weight. The weight will be closest to it, and that's what we call a weighted average. So I can predict which isotope occurs most often. Here's the answers. 
right? So hydrogen one occurs 99.9% .9 of the time in nature. That's just the way it is, is, is found. So because it is found this much in nature, the periodic table is going to give this weight of hydrogen one the most emphasis on that box in the periodic table. So where you saw this box before, and you saw the letter H and 1.00794, well that 1.00794 is simply saying, you know, if this isotope occurs that much in nature, we're going to give the mass a lot of significance in, in that periodic table box. Let's try this again. Okay, here's carbon. If you have a periodic table, check it out. There's a couple numbers. Six is the atomic number, and the number we're concerned about in today's lesson, the average average mass number, or the average atomic mass of carbon is 12.01. That's good enough for us, all right? So which one of the isotopes on that I'm telling you here is it isotope 12, 13, or 14? Which one of those mass numbers is 12.01 most similar to? And I think it's pretty obvious. The mass number it most closely matches is this one right here. So I'm going to make a prediction that that isotope occurs most in nature. So once again, we're simply trying to look at the mass number and say, okay, this is an average of all of these mass numbers. It's an average of 12, 13, and 14. It's considered a weighted average, meaning significance on the periodic table of 12.01 is going to be given to the isotope that occurs most often in nature. I am making a very confident prediction that 12 occurs most in nature. How do I know that number is so close to 12? Okay, here we go. Yeah, carbon 12. Carbon with a mass number of 12 occurs 98.9% .9 of the time in nature. So therefore, the periodic table box is going to give it the most emphasis. This is a very cool shirt. All right, maybe we want to get this shirt. The atomic number is over here. All right, we're not concerned about that, but it has 26 protons. That's what it's telling us. The number I want you to see is at 55.845. And that actually should be atomic mass units. All right? That is the average mass number. Well, if iron has a mass of 54, has an isotope with a mass of 56, another one with a mass of 57, and a last one with a mass of 58, the question is, which one of these isotopes occurs most frequently in nature? Once again, you want to look at the average mass number in the periodic table and simply say, okay, which one is this closest to? Clearly, this is closest to this one. This one occurs most often in nature. That's all I'm going to really say. I can't really say how often this occurs, or this, or this. I'm just saying with confidence that this one will occur most in nature, and that is because my average atomic mass is closest to it. Let's check it out. Sure, this one occurs 91.7% of the time. So yes, the average mass number of 55.845 is closest to this over here of iron 56 because it occurs in nature 91.7% of the time. So once again, the periodic table is trying to not just give an average of all the mass numbers, but give an average that gives emphasis to the element or the isotope that occurs most frequently in nature. And the last example that I want to look at is going to be calcium. At this point, we should be pretty solid on this. You should be able to press pause look at the average atomic mass, the average atomic mass is down here and that is in atomic mass units which one, which isotope does this most closely resemble and therefore that one will most likely occur most in nature a little squiggly line and yes bam it occurs, it looks just like that mass number right there so this has a mass of 40 this is a mass of 40.08, therefore I'm telling you, calcium-40 must occur somewhere like 95% of the time in nature. That is something I'd kind of predict. And it occurs actually 96.9% .9 of the time in nature. So, once again, in conclusion, my average atomic mass is an average. It is an average of all of these masses right here for calcium. Calcium has four isotopes. The isotope that occurs most often is given the most emphasis in the average. And that is called a weighted average. And part two of this lesson coming up very shortly is going to be how do I use math to calculate that. So once again, guys, calcium-40 occurs most in nature, 96.9% .9 of the time. The rest of them, that is not that, that high percentage in nature. So therefore, 
we're going to give that the most emphasis in the average atomic mass. Well, I have another slide here for, you know, which isotope occurs most often in nature, so let's just use this one, okay? Here we go, this is another cool shirt. 17 is the number of protons, the average mass number is 35.453, so my question to you is, once again, which isotope occurs most in nature? Just for some additional practice, press pause and answer it. I'm going to predict here in this case that chlorine 35 appears most in nature simply because 35.4 is closest to this number. All right, so I'm going to say 35.45 occurs most in nature. I'm not actually even going to say how much it occurs in nature. I'm just saying it occurs the most. It's the isotope that is most abundant because that is the mass number, 35, is closest to 35.4. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed 75%. It's tough to make a guess like that when I see 35.45, but chlorine 35 does occur most in nature. All right, guys, so that second part of uh, today's lesson is going to be how do I calculate that average atomic mass. And there is a math formula that we're going to use, and the math formula is shown down here. It's going to be the mass of the isotope, the mass of the isotope. The mass of the isotope comes from this number and this number. Remember, those numbers are called the mass numbers. So we call the mass numbers the mass of the isotope. So where I have 16 and 14, where would they come from? That's the combination of protons and neutrons, and that is atomic mass units, atomic mass units. This is actually a decimal percent abundance. So we're looking at percentages. I'm going to actually need you to do this. Where there's a decimal point, I'm going to need you to move it two places over and make it what I call a decimal percent, 0 0.90. And likewise, this becomes a 0 0.10. The formula in order to calculate the atomic mass or the average atomic mass from the periodic onto the periodic table is going to be take the isotope's individual mass and multiply it by the decimal percent abundance. And then you're going to add the next isotope's mass times the next decimal percent abundance. And if there are more isotopes, you would do the same process, plus the mass times percent abundance. So let's just figure this out here, okay? The mass is going to be 14. It's the same as the mass number. So 14 times the decimal percent abundance, 14 times 0 0.9 is going to give me a number. I'll calculate that in a second. And to set up the bottom part of the problem here, the next mass is going to be 16, that is the mass number, times the decimal percent abundance, which was 0 0.1. Whatever those numbers are, I am going to add them up. I'm going to add them up and get a total number, and that is going to be my average atomic mass. So I'm going to press pause, go ahead and solve the problem too, and I'll come back with the answers. Okay, so I went ahead and solved the problem here. 14 times 0.9 gives me a 12.6, and 16 times 0.1 gives me a 1.6, and if I add those two values up, I come up with my average atomic mass, or the average mass number. Okay, does that number make sense? Well, if the mass, which had the mass of 14, the isotope had the mass of 14, occurs 90% of the time in nature, I'm going to expect my final answer to be somewhere close to 14. Squiggly mark just means somewhere close to 14. It's going to be close to 14 because that occurs the most in nature. And so my average atomic mass is going to be 14.2. Okay, here's some more fictitional elements for us here. It's element Z. All right, just right off the bat, I'm going to make a, uh, a blanket prediction here. I'm seeing the isotope with a mass number of 20. It occurs literally 99% of the time in nature. So whatever my average atomic mass is using the, using the weighted average method, I'm going to say it's got to be close to the 20. It occurs that much time in nature. So do uh, press the pause button and do this problem, and I'll come back with a solution. Okay, so here you are. First thing you want to look at here is what is the mass? Okay, what is the mass? Well, the mass is the same as the mass number. So the mass is 20 atomic mass units for this isotope. The second isotope has a mass number of 21, and the third isotope has a mass number of 22. Excellent. 
All right, the next thing we're going to need to do is convert all of these abundances into decimal abundances. That means moving your decimal point two places. One, two, 99% becomes 0 0.9. 0.07, or 0.7 rather, becomes one, two, becomes decimal point zero, zero, 007, like 007. All right, that's a James Bond right there. And here we go, the last one, one, two places. So this becomes 0 0.003. And so your math problem, really, I can solve it just using what's out here, is going to be the mass times the decimal percent abundance. So what I'm going to do is simply do this. 20 times 0.99 is going to give me a value, and I'll write it over there. 21 times 0 0.007 is going to give me a value. I'll write it on the right-hand side. And likewise, this too. And I'm just going to use this screen as a nice way to set the problem up. And whatever values I get, I'll add them all up and I'll put my total or my average mass number down on the bottom and now I'm going to make a prediction right now that number that's inside the box is going to be something like 20.0 20 point, 20 point oh something 20.0 oh something that's just my prediction because the mass of 20 occurs 99% of the time so if I'm close great if I'm not I should be in that ballpark though so let's press pause guys and solve this problem Okay, guys, here we go. So, crunching the numbers. The top value was 19.8. In the middle, I had 0.147. And finally, at the end, I had 0 0.066. And just to clarify, the numbers we're using here is atomic mass units for each one of these atomic mass units. And my final answer, when I added all these values up of my weighted average, my final answer is 20.013. And once again, that is atomic mass units. So that's the deal, guys. I'll give you the formula on the test. No worries about that. But please be familiar with how to, you know, find the mass. The mass, once again, was came from the mass number. That's what it came from, the mass number. All right? And I'll give you the decimal percent abundances on the test, or just the percent abundances. Convert them into decimals by moving the decimal place over two in every one of those. And with that, I think you'll be excellent and you'll be armed to uh, find success in calculating the average atomic mass and also recognizing which isotopes occur most in nature. All right? Best wishes, guys. If you uh, have any questions, please email me at bpost at frhsd.com. Okay, guys. Best wishes. Catch you later.